Professor Liu, your, um, the sharing of the screen is working properly, but would you like to um, take it down before, because maybe you would like to um, say hi first in person and then Oh, I, uh, you mean stop sharing? Um, yes, it's already been shared, so we can't actually see you. So if you want to stop sharing for a moment, uh, would that be possible? Sure, okay, let me see how I stop sharing. Um, all right, so we can see you now. Okay, thank you. Oh, right, yeah. um, so hello everyone, it's two o'clock and so we shall begin our plenary session of SCAA um, 9. So as mentioned before, we are, um, this plenary session is going to take place in a hybrid manner. So we are going to have three papers given via Zoom and two given in person. And the first will be um, presented by Li Liu, Professor Li Liu, who is Sir Robert Ho Tong Professor in Chinese Archaeology at the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures at Stanford University. Um, Professor Liu will be give, giving a talk on the origin and dispersal of proto sino tibetan in archaeology, interpretation of painted pottery. So without further ado, let me introduce Professor Liu. Hi. Hello. Uh, let me share the screen. Hello, oh, can you see the screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, all right. Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I would like to thank the conference organizer uh, to give me this chance of uh, sharing some of uh, our research, recent research. Um, I'm going to focus on a topic related to a uh, proto Sino Tibetan speakers and the, emphasized on archaeological evidence and especially use painted pottery as examples. Okay, um, the history of human evolution is the history of migration and dispersal. Uh, we understand that the earliest uh, migration occurred more than a million years ago related to Homo erectus, um, who occupied the most part of the uh, old world. And the second uh, dispersal uh, contributed to the uh, Homo sapiens, uh, who occupied the entire world. And the third major uh, migration and dispersal happened in the Holocene period related to agricultural development. And it has been a so-called hypothesis, the farming language dispersal hypothesis, which um, emphasized on the significant language families in the world um, and uh, see the dispersal of this language uh, was associated uh, with agricultural development. And so far, we have seen a great development of those research in Indo-European language, um, Austronesian language, and recently, uh, Trans-Eurasian uh, Trans language. Um, but sino tibetan language um, is one of the largest uh, language family, um, which has more than 400 languages, uh, spoken by more than 1.3 million people. And based on previous studies, um, this language family, the population uh, originally developed in North China in the, uh, along the Yellow River and then dispersed to the surrounding areas. Uh, we contributed to this uh, um, understanding um, to uh, Peter Buehl and many other researchers. And the recent studies suggest that uh, the Sino-Tibetan um, languages started about, uh, originated in the North China about uh, 8,000 years ago, coinciding with the onset of a millet-based agriculture, and then began to split into branches about uh, 6,000 years ago. And that time period covers uh, pre-Yangshao culture 
and Yangshao culture. And we can see that uh, they spread towards uh, west uh, and the southwest uh, occupied the Tibetan area. Uh, and this Yangshao culture occupied uh, quite a large area uh, and also um, spread to uh, towards the west and uh, emerge a new branch of Yangshao culture called Ma Jia Yao culture. And that is uh, what we are going to emphasize on today. So uh, we also see the recent development of DNA study support uh, the linguistic study suggests that uh, um, primary ancestor of high altitude Tibetan Burman speakers originated from the Neolithic farming populations in the Yellow River Basin. So all those two um, fields um, reached almost the same conclusion, but archeologically, we have not really investigate how this early um, proto Sino uh, Tibetan people, um, their life way, and uh, how they form their cultural identity, and especially when they um, disperse to other regions. Okay, so we need to uh, briefly go through this uh, Neolithic evolution. Uh, and we see that in North China and South China, uh, the early Neolithic started about 9,000 years ago. And that is the time we see the pottery especially become diversified uh, in types, uh, suggesting specialization of uh, uh, the function of those potteries. And uh, although each culture and uh, the different cultures um, have very uh, unique, uh, each has a rather unique assemblages, but they all share one type of vessels, which we refer to as a globular uh, with small openings and big belly. I, and then they have very special function based on our study of a micro um, botanical remains, including uh, starch, featherless, and also fungi. And we now understand those vessels were related to alcoholic beverages to, um, for, for fermentation purposes. I, and then they use the uh, varieties of uh, uh, cereals, millet, rice, and others, uh, as, as well as some tubers um, as ingredients. And then they um, also use uh, the chu starter. And that's based on our analysis of starch, featherless, and the fungi. And all those uh, vessels we analyze all pointing to the same function. Okay, so then we see the early uh, pottery, this type of pottery were clearly associated with the feasting. And alcohol is not for consume just at home, but it's uh, uh, to hold people together to share. Uh, another interesting phenomenon is that uh, when this special type of, of uh, a pottery emerged, we also see painted pottery uh, developed. At the beginning, they are very, uh, they're small and the uh, uh, decoration is simple, but then gradually they become uh, more elaborate. And that is what we see uh, during the Yangshao period, Yangshao cultural period. So Yangshao um, is uh, uh, early Yangshao located in this middle Yellow River, uh, contemporary with the Eastern culture like Beijing. I, and then the middle Yangshao expanded towards the north and the west, um, contemporary with the Dabanko culture in the east. I, and the late Yangshao seems shrank a little better, but the, a branch uh, developed that is what we see Ma Jia Yao culture. So the Yangshao culture, um, about uh, 5,000, um, uh, 4,000 years ago, Yangshao culture uh, was replaced by Longshan culture, but the late, Yang, uh, Ma, uh, late Ma Jia Yao culture continued to expand towards the West uh, and also um, entered the Tibetan Plateau. 
So this is a, a general review of archaeological evidence. So we need to understand why the Yangshao culture began to expand in what kind of circumstances, uh, specifically the climatic conditions. So we understand uh, based on the study of the uh, climate uh, from the early Neolithic, about 9,000 years ago to 7,000 years ago, uh, it was increased moisture uh, conditions, but the peak about 7,000 years ago, and that just the beginning of the Yangshao culture. And then we began to see the climate decline and fluctuate. It uh, means they're uh, drier, and that would affect agriculture. And that is uh, the condition, uh, climatic condition for the people to uh, spread out and under population pressure and unstable environmental conditions. Okay, so then we see the pottery. Uh, some of them are painted, uh, but not a lot of them are painted. And uh, when you look at the early Yangshao and the middle Yangshao period, uh, and uh, only about uh, less than 10% pottery were painted. And they were mainly serving vessels, drinking vessels and serving vessels. Um, and uh, we also see the Yangshao culture develop a new type of uh, um, fermentation uh, vessels uh, called amphora or called a jian di ping, a uh, pointed bottom jar. And uh, we see this painting, painted pottery, uh, mainly serving vessels and drinking vessels. And uh, there's a uh, uh, decoration on um, the amphoras also appeared and towards the end of Yangshao culture. Okay, so why people painted pottery? It's not to hide at home, but it's to display. So we emphasized on the uh, painted pottery in uh, contextual uh, conditions. Uh, so the, uh, the relationship with the, the social environment. Um, we see the painted pottery is part of the ritual economy. Uh, it's, it's not just for art. We see that as art, but the ancient people uh, the painted pottery for certain purposes. Uh, the useful display, uh, and uh, they were uh, painted because they were seen in public um, activities and be seen uh, to be seen by uh, a great number of people. Uh, and they are associated with uh, feasting, uh, public feasting, group feasting, and they were used for convey uh, information uh, and uh, to spread ideas. Uh, so the size of uh, uh, consumption groups in the feasting uh, is related to the size of a pottery, uh, also related to the size of the um, motifs on the painted pottery. So we see this uh, painted pottery uh, play an important role uh, during uh, the time period when uh, Sino Tibetan population uh, expanded uh, towards the surrounding areas. Okay, so we see uh, the Yangshao culture, uh, of course, is an agricultural society. Uh, that is not strange because agricultural society already flourished in China at this time, 7,000 years ago, uh, but they have uh, unique characteristics uh, which are not shared by other cultures. So one is uh, painted pottery, very elaborate, and the second is the amphora used for uh, drinking uh, and for fermentation and the drinking alcoholic beverages. The third is uh, settlement pattern. Uh, there were the settlement, typical Yangshao settlement has a central plaza surrounded by the houses and mount houses. There are always uh, uh, one or more large public houses. Okay, so we, we see this uh, um, four elements um, play uh, some integrated role uh, to uh, uh, functional for this uh, uh, migration process. Okay, during the late Yangshao, we see the new development uh, in the Yangshao culture. There, um, there are pen, painting found on the floors. Uh, this is from the 
Da Bi Wan culture in Gansu. I and uh, uh, the uh, emperor continue to exist uh, for alcoholic purposes. I and uh, uh, painted pottery become more elaborate and they part paint all over. I uh, and some painted pottery show um, the dancing scene. I uh, and they were very. Uh, Interesting, they are probably related to the floor painting in the Dadi one, but those are the Ma Jia Yao culture. Okay, so the drinking um, and the dancing are two very uh, important elements we are going to emphasize. And uh, because they are related to the dispersal of the Sino Tibetan speakers. Uh, and here we see uh, the emperor become bigger and bigger from the early Yangshao to the late Yangshao and become also decorated. I, and uh, uh, the reason we believe they were used not only for uh, fermentation, but also for drinking is based on the evidence of useware analysis. We found um, on the rims of many uh, pottery, the emperor pottery, there were a vertical Illustrations. I uh, and also inside the pottery, we found a uh, fetalus identifiable as uh, uh, reeds. So if we use uh, when we use reeds to uh, scratch against the shirt, we recreate the same kind of illustrations uh, on this experiment. So that means uh, reeds or bamboos were used as straws for drinking. And this kind of drinking um, behavior had been uh, found in ancient Mesopotamia and also in uh, uh, modern uh, Africa and the East Asia, Southeast Asia as well. I, and especially very popular in Southwest China, in the Sichuan and Yunnan area. And they are, uh, this kind of a tradition were practiced by uh, more than a dozen ethnic groups like um, Tibet. Tibetan, Qiang, um, Tujia, uh, Miao, and, and etc. And it, it's, they had the this kind of tradition, drinking traditions, very emphasized on um, the age and the gender. So the uh, male and the female uh, drink separately, and also they take take a turn from the elder to the younger. So this uh, their elderly. Um, the, uh, arranged, I, and uh, each, each time the people drink, finish the uh, the liquid in the pot, and then they add water. Uh, so next group will come to drink. So it's uh, uh, very orderly activities. Um, and the so we when we look at the Yangshao culture, uh, we see the large houses or um, almost every major Yangshao sites would have large houses. And they become um, larger and larger in size be, uh, from the uh, early Yangshao to the late Yangshao. I, and uh, the surface of large houses are very clean and very hard. So with a special treatment um, and for uh, certainly for certain activities because you don't find the, uh, this kind of floor in the ordinary res residential houses. So we analyzed uh, uh, residues on one house uh, and we found evidence of uh, alcoholic fermentation. The remains of uh, uh, starch and featherless all pointing to uh, the, uh, this uh, behavior. So suggesting drinking was a part of a uh, ritual activities happened in the uh, uh, large public house. I, and we also see this uh, house, um, the location of the house originally is in, inside a, uh, a settlement uh, near the plaza, but then uh, later Yangshao, they become isolated and in the, uh, in uh, independent from residential area in a very open, uh, large area. So they can serve a greater number of uh, people. So here is uh, the, uh, we see there's a public open area, 
also um, increase from pre-Yangshao to the Yangshao and finally to the late Yangshao. So it just become greater and greater. And that is uh, uh, parallel to uh, the expansion of the uh, uh, Central Tibetan population. So they have uh, greater interaction with the different social groups and uh, uh, within a much larger regions. Okay, so now we uh, need to explore why uh, the this seven pattern related to the pottery, the painted pottery. Uh, the painted pottery can be divided into two general groups. One is a painted outside, uh, the exterior um, um, on the vessel, and those paintings the motifs are large, uh, schematic, and geometric. I and the other. Uh, group is uh, the uh, paint inside the vessels. And those paintings, the motifs are small, detailed, and uh, sometimes realistic. So you cannot see the details if you stay far away. But this large uh, out, uh, external motifs, you can see that from far away. So this is important related to uh, the people participated, the, um, how large the crowd participated in the feasting. Uh, using an ethnographic um, examples from Southwest America, uh, we see the Pueblo people uh, practice uh, feasting and the, the, the feasting is a kind of a, a performance uh, because women would dress up and they carry the food on their head with this uh, elaborately painted the pottery. And those, uh, when they move into the public area for feasting and there are audience watching them and each family would contribute the food and also um, show their pottery. So this is almost like a competition. I, and uh, so how far people can see those uh, decorations? Uh, the study suggests that uh, uh, there are two, uh, there, you can divide it into two distances. One is called public near and the other called public far. So the public near uh, is uh, means uh, be within 10 meters. And if the, the motif is smaller um, the, um, or the height of the motif is smaller than 7.6 centimeters, you can only see them in the near public. But if you want to see those motifs um, farther, further away, more than 10 meters, and it has to be greater, or the, the height has to be greater than 7.6 centimeters. And in this situation, we see the Yangshao pottery. Uh, the early uh, pre-Yangshao pottery can probably only be seen this kind of uh, decoration within 10 meters, so it's public near. I, but Yangshao culture, especially later to the Majiayao period, and you certainly can see them in public far. So that means uh, the decoration of those pottery are associated with the size of a crowd. I, and how people display their pottery and by carrying on their head, uh, just like what we saw in, in Pueblo uh, in America. I, and we see in the Majiayao, uh, pottery, they often have uh, handles very low and they could serve uh, as a very convenient location for people to hold it when they uh, carry it on the head. And uh, some pottery has uh, one handle low and one handle high. And if we replace them on the uh, on these two Korean women, uh, and we see they're just very convenient uh, sleigh, uh, they can hold these uh, lower handles. I, and uh, so if we look at this uh, method, carrying method to display, and we understand that uh, uh, they serve for um, the large crowd, especially in the late Yangshao period. Okay, what about the public near? I, and we uh, mentioned that uh, for the uh, drinking, so they call the zajiu. Uh, in south, uh, Southwest China, they, uh, they serve the drink as a group and uh, uh, between the group, they add water. So this is uh, one thing you can see a man is uh, transfer water from a basin 
to the drinking pot. I, and I assume that's my hypothesis that those painted pottery serve the same, fun, the same function. I, and they were uh, not for carrying solid food because you would not see the uh, motifs, but they should be used for uh, serving liquid. And the, what kind of liquid they need to serve in what condition, we can get answer from this uh, Zajiu uh, activities in still practiced in Southwest China. Uh, the Zajiu uh, drinking uh, was not uh, isolated activities, always associated with the dancing. Uh, it's called uh, Guozhuang. Uh, and so you can see, uh, here is a uh, uh, Tibetan woman drinking uh, in the circle and uh, in the outside circle are the people dancing. So they take turn to drink and dance. Uh, sometimes this uh, uh, dancing crowd could be very large from several dozen to several hundred. I, and that they were, um, can be compared with the pottery, uh, with the dancing scenes. Um, so this is uh, what I uh, had uh, uh, tried to summarize uh, or put all the different evidence together uh, to present to you um, about the some cultural activities practiced by the Yangshao culture uh, when they uh, began to move to other regions to to the new territories and also at the same time they want to keep the, their connections or with their homeland and with uh, their um, relatives. Uh, and so the social connections were always very important for uh, the migrants. And it was um, in, in the ancient time uh, as well as today. So we summarize the several points from what I presented here. And um, the first, is expansion of the Yangshao culture to the West and the Southwest as material manifestation of proto sino tibetan dispersal uh, coincide with the increased climate, uh, climatic fluctuations and the population pressure in the Yellow River region. Uh, the four main cultural elements of Yangshao culture, painted pottery, amphora, um, large public house, and the central plaza, were all related to ritual feasting activities. Neolithic pottery decoration in the Yellow River Valley became more elaborate through time. Their function was to convey information in both public near and public far scenarios in ritual feasting activities. Increased the size in surface decoration coincided with the increased regional interactions among communities, greater scales of ritual activities associated with the material cultural expansion of a proto sino tibetan uh, These practices emphasize group solidarity and a cultural identity as part of a social mechanism for communicating and constituting values and beliefs. Uh, main components of the Yangshao feasting ritual practice, um, common drinking, uh, communal drinking and dancing, uh, but not painted pottery, um, together with the proto sino tibetan language and the genes have survived until today in Southwest China. So the Yangshao culture was gone, replaced by other Neolithic cultures, but Yangshao culture's spirit continue to survive, especially in Southwest China. And we had, um, they gave us um, inspirations to understand and to reconstruct uh, Yangshao cultures, cultural values, uh, and how they keep their social identity and the connections. So the, the old saying, Li Shi Er Chiu Zhu Ye, means when rights are lost, find them in the countryside. So we find Yangshao culture spirit, spirit in the countryside of the Sino Tibetan uh, language speakers in the Southwest China. Um, thank you for, uh, for listening.